What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Thanksgiving. I didn't necessarily have any plan to drop this video, but over the past week, we've seen that Workhorse stock price has been jumping. The stock price has jumped from over 60% just over the past week. And the reason why I want to make this video is because some people who are new to investing or haven't really invested for very long are going to assume that because the stock price is doing so well, that Workhorse overall is doing great. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The stock is actually doing worse than it ever has been doing. And so I felt the need to go ahead and make this video. I don't want to make this too long, but there's key reasons that you need to look at to realize why this stock is not doing any good as it was before. It's just the only reason why the stock is increasing is because there's more in investor enthusiasm for electric vehicle related stocks. Now, what I mean by this is that there's going to be some macroeconomic benefits that the whole electric vehicle industry is experiencing, and Workhorse just happens to be one of the beneficiaries that are receiving head that are receiving tailwinds from this benefit. And if you're new to investing, essentially, if you don't if you know what a headwind or a tailwind is, a headwind is literally just how it sounds. If you're in an airplane and there's high headwinds then the airplane is going to travel a lot slower because it has more air resistance pushing back on it. And it's similar to a company. If a company is facing headwinds, they're progressing a lot slower and that's actually a difficult time for them. Tailwinds are the exact opposite. If a company is receiving tailwinds, then they're actually progressing faster than expected and they're receiving a lot of benefits. This is exactly what's happening to the electric vehicle industry. There are tailwinds going forward. More specifically, the biggest tailwind I would say of them all is with our new president, Joe Biden. He has made it well known that he is going to be very inclined to adopt electric vehicle policies and push for the transition from gas vehicles to electric vehicles. And that's why all electric vehicle stocks are receiving stock bumps. Now, the biggest problem, though, is investors think all electric vehicle stocks are going to do well. And that's why Workhorse is also benefiting from this boost, when in reality, a workhorse is one of what I would say the laggards in the group. So if you actually look at Workhorse's performance and how it's done on its most recent earnings call, the stock is terrible. It's not doing well at all. I'm not saying it's a bad company long term, but right now as it stands, you have no reason to think, oh, this stock is going to do amazing. The stock just hasn't been doing well. And we're going to look at key facts right now to see why this stock is doing worse than it ever has been doing. And real quick side note, before we get into this, as we're going down these, these facts, people are going to say, hey, well, Workhorse is still in the early innings and it's still kind of just getting adjusted. But as we go forward, the stock's going to do better and better. So essentially what they're saying is Workhorse is a startup company and it hasn't been around for too long. So we're going to experience the gains if we invest long term. This also could not be further from the truth. The stock has been around for over a decade at least. And before it even went public, the stock has been around for decades. This stock has been around for a long time and they've just kind of been ad adjusting and adapting, but they've been experiencing a lot of trouble in doing this process. So don't be fooled and think that Workhorse is a new stock and they're going to explode over the next few years. Not necessarily the case right now. So now let's, without further ado, we're going to go into the key facts about why the stock is just doing terribly. Okay, so I guess you can kind of consider this as like a mini due diligence series here. Now, you should definitely do your own due diligence, but I'm going to kind of walk you guys through here the, the most recent financial results that we have and why it's important to look at this before considering to invest in this stock. Now, this is going to be for the most recent third quarter 2020 period. And these financial results are relatively new. So all this still applies to the company. So if we walk down through this, this snapshot here, one by one line item, you'll see that Workhorse has been doing worse in every possible aspect that a business can be viewed as, I guess you could say. So if we look at the business's sales, now, if you're kind of new to investing, you're going to look at this and you're going to think, wow, the company is actually doing really well. That's not necessarily true. So sales for the third quarter of 2020 were recorded at 565,000 compared to 4,000 in third quarter of 2019. Now, you might look at that and go, wow, that's an insane amount of growth. The company must be doing well. But it's always important to look at the company's margins, not necessarily, not necessarily just their sales, because any company can just increase their sales 
if they're willing to sell the product for a really low price. So you also want to look at the company's margins. What are they doing relative to their cost of goods sold and how their overall margins are looking? And if we look at that piece of the puzzle here, we'll see that the company is doing terrible. So from 4000 to 565 let's say the company was able to increase their revenues by about $560,000 relative to third quarter of 2019. Well, if you look at the cost of goods sold here, the cost of goods sold actually increased to $2.8 million from one point four in third quarter of 2019. So that $560,000 increase in sales is dwarfed by a $1.4 million increase in cost of goods sold. But it just doesn't stop here. This, is, this isn't the only uh, pitfall of workhorse here. If you look at the SG&A sales, selling general and administrative expenses here, that increased from to six million from two point six million in the same period last year. So now this completely just blows everything out of the water. You have a three point four million increase in their SGNA expenses and a one point four million increase in cost of goods sold. So overall, you have about a five million increase in overall expenses just for cost of goods sold and SGNA. But you only have a five hundred and fifty of five hundred and sixty thousand increase in sales. So overall, the company's losing a ton of money this quarter. Now, if we just go ahead and keep scrolling down, we'll see that these two expenses don't even take into account research and development. So typically, a company like Workhorse is going to have to spend a ton of money on R and D, and so Workhorse just constantly needs to spend a bunch of R and D in order to ensure that it's being competitive and it's constantly becoming more and more efficient within the electric vehicle race. That's not what's happening here. The company has remained flat. So it, it spent 1.6 million, but it, it spent 1.6 million last year as well. So they're not spending any more money on R&D. They're keeping it constant. While at the same time, these expenses are ballooning. So I would say that they can't afford to spend more money on R&D right now because they're at such a huge loss. And that's really dangerous because that's going to slow them down while other electric vehicle companies who are spending more and more money into R&D are going to get ahead of workhorse. Now, what's probably the worst thing out of, out of all the things that we've yet to talk about is going to be this interest expense. So... The company has taken on much more debt because they just simply can't survive. And now net interest expense increased to $74 million, and this was compared to just $5.9 million in the, in, the, in the same period last year. Now, this is insane, and you guys should really consider this, because this company's debt has just blew out of proportion, and whether or not they can service this debt and pay it back is going to be a big question going forward. Because if not, then your investment is essentially worthless. And that stock price will go all the way to zero. This is a huge liability for the company. So overall, we can see here that net loss was at $84 million compared with a net loss of $11.5 million in the third quarter of 2019. Now you'll see here the company currently has $80 million compared to $23.9 million of cash sitting on the balance sheet. So 80 million of cash and overall essentially right now they have a cash balance of 260 million dollars because they were also able to take out this 200 million dollars of debt. So overall on the balance sheet they have about 260 million in cash. But if you look here, they already burnt through 84 million dollars. And so if this company already burnt through $84 million in just the third quarter alone, I'm wondering how much longer it's going to take for them to burn through the rest of this $260 million. So all in all, this was a terrible quarter for Workhorse. They've shown no improvement at all, but yet the stock price was able to increase. So now let's go to hear what management has to say. So the management says here that it's essentially a bunch of stuff that they're just going to tell investors just to make them happy. And management here knows that they need to tell workhorse investors what they want to hear because they'll believe it. Workhorse investors will believe it. Our strategic partnership approach to engage with dealership, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to read all this. This is essentially what they're going to say to kind of cover themselves for this poor performance that they've, that they've provided here. So they said... 
Previously, we've projected three to 400 vehicles to be produced by the end of 2020, mostly in the fourth quarter. Although we still manufacture and deliver vehicles in Q4, it will be substantially lower amount than our previous guidance. They're saying this is, and they're essentially kind of blaming this on COVID. They're saying the inability of our primary battery supplier to meet our volumes and COVID related slowdowns, and also COVID resulted in them cutting their production staff. Now, what I'm concerned about is I'm actually skeptical as to how much of this this poor performance is actually due to COVID. If you look at the past, this company has constantly failed on delivering its promises. They originally said they project three to four hundred, and they failed on delivering that one this time. And if you look at my previous videos, you'll see why this company has almost always failed to hit its production targets. This is nothing new. Now they just have a scapegoat, scapegoat where they can blame COVID. Despite everything I just said and how the business is doing poorly in every single aspect of the business, somehow the stock was still able to increase by 60%. And that's again, mainly due to the economic benefits going on for all electric vehicle companies. Workhorse just happens to be a beneficiary of, this, this ta of these tailwinds, but that shouldn't be the case because of what we just described. And investors are pretty much making a play here that once the stock obtains that contract, then it's pretty much going to be up from there and the stock is going to constantly do well. So the reason why this is so risky is because you're essentially trying to catch a falling knife and it's essentially the equivalent to gambling. You don't know when or how much of that contract workhorse will actually win. So that's the key, po that's the key point of this video. Don't confuse the stock price with how this stock is actually doing. Despite that huge increase in stock price, the stock is doing poor. The actual company itself is doing poorly. And if you're buying at a stock price of already almost $30, then you're creating a lot of risk for yourself going forward. I'm not saying buy the stock. I'm not saying don't buy the stock. I'm just giving you some pieces of advice that you should look at before you actually choose to invest in this stock. And once again, the whole point of this channel is to give you both good and bad sides to each stock. I know that the positives of this stock are covered well in depth. Just go look at any of these other workhorse videos on YouTube. I just didn't find too many videos talking about the negative aspects. That's why I made this video. So if you enjoyed the video, if you liked the video, please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. If you want more updates on stocks like this, stay tuned. And until next time, peace.